Hey! Yes, I haven't done it in ages. Sorry. Wow, wow, <laughs> I was just looking at you just as you were about to talk. I had a lovely intro, no? Yeah, well, you can do Ho, it, ho, yeah. ho, hello, and welcome back to the Finish Live, proudly sponsored by Hollywood Bets. It's Christmas time! Ow! <laughs> I like your Christmas jumper, Andrew. Thanks. It's nice, I like that now. Thanks. It's ho, ho, homer. Wow. Who are you, who are you donning today, Thomas? True, Dolph, is it? Uh, yeah, it's not it's an old rain day. You see me looking a bit strange, lads. I've just played football and absolutely done my back in. Just neck to sulfidine before we've come on. Um, I'm in absolute agony here, to be honest. So if I'm pulling faces, it's probably to do with that and not just Andrew and Dave's tips. There's you probably need a better seat than you're on if you're after doing your back in. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what would help now. Anyway, you play so... indoor, you get injured. Yeah, you're worse than me. Common denominator there. Lads, I ran. I couldn't keep the ball in, so I ran into the wall and hit the wall in anger, and pulled the bottom of my back. That sums up my indoor soccer career. You did what in anger? I hit the wall. I was like, ah, and then it just shot all the way down my back. It's absolutely awful. It's never a good idea to hit a wall. No. 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 Not a good idea. No. Oh no, Emmett Mark II says Najinsky. I, I feel every bit of his pain right now. I tell you that much. Anywho, it's Christmas time. We're Leopard Sound Christmas Festival. Bit of Limerick, bit of Kempton, bit of Chips, though. So on and so forth. But before that. Hollywood Bets have started our Cheltenham Festival Bank Builder, where you can earn up to 40 euro slash pounds of free bets for the 2022 festival. So this starts on the 26th. Um, there will be one qualifying race for the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. Uh, you back the winner of each of them race, and you will qualify for a 5 euro free bet with Hollywood Bets for the Cheltenham Festival. So this will be run every Saturday, every weekend after that, up to the Cheltenham Festival. And you'll find all the terms and conditions on hollywoodbets.ie and hollywoodbets.co.uk. So that starts on the 26th. You'll find all the races there as well. Hi, right, I'm back. Also... Just to give people a bit of notice, and I'll put them in the middle again. We have enhanced prices, enhanced doubles for tonight. We have four, and I'm going to go through them now. So they are live from now until midnight tonight. So they are as follows. Flooring Porter to win the Christmas Hurdle at Leopard Sound with Apple Tar to win the Savage Chase. Six to one double. It's the first one. The next one. Sharjah to win the Matterson's Hurdle and Asturian, Asturian Kaboom to win the King George. This is one for you. I'll put in Kaboom on one of them. 14 and a half to one. <laughs> Next one, we have Fernie Hollow to win the Racing Post Novice Chase. And we have Ahoy Senior to win the Court of Star Novice Chase. Five to one. You're never going to spell that horse's name right. Fernie, I know, I know. I've I seen it there when I... When I done it, and I won't go back to change it because I had to do it. In Daps the next best, so not bothered. Um, and the last one is Epitant to win the Christmas hurdle at Kempton and Clan de Zobo to win the King George at thirteen to two. So I'll remind you again halfway through, but they are live as of now on Hollywood Bet. You'll find it under the finish line specials on there, and they're live till twelve o'clock tonight. And if you're watching this pre-recorded, 12 o'clock tonight means Wednesday, the 22nd. <sighs> He's off already. We're only starting. He's you're right there, Dave. It's only starting. Still, it's the hard tablets, Tom. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm actually not even... I'm a little bit tired, but I'm not too tired. But it just makes me on, like. So. Right, let's get started. So, we have a lot of races to get through. It's very warm in here. Do you want me to turn down the heat? No, I just... I'll, I'll take this off. I'll just, one second. No, you tell you and all that, guys. I'm back. So we are going to start off at Kempton on Stevens Day. That's That's from the UK everybody. Boxing Day. Good on. No, I the lights will annoy everybody. What does the fucking annoy mean? No, you can't see Dino Dave. Yeah. Uh, what do we do with Dino Dave after Christmas? Do we saw off the hat? No. 
We keep going on life. Yeah, he's just waiting for Christmas, Dave. Ah, oh, what about? <laughs> right, we start with the Corto Star Novice Chase. We have Brave Man's Gain at 17 to 20, a high senior 6 to 5, 3 under 2 5 at 5s, Miller's Bank 10s, T Clipper 14s, and Kiltili Briggs at 16 to 1. Not a bad way to start the show. Brave Man's Game first as a high senior. A high senior has this number or hurdles. To me, looks the better chaser as well on the back of what he done the last day. But looks a very good race. Thir- three under two five jumping would be a very, very big worry. So, Tom, who wins the first race we preview tonight? Um, yeah, the viewers of the of the show will know I'm a big Brave Man's Game fan, and um, straight after the festival, I put him up for the RSA. Um, I've supported him all along. I, look. I'll continue to support him. However, this is going to be an absolute cracker. Um, If the two of these show up and they show up on form, which there's no reason to to suggest they won't, this is going to be a a brilliant race. Um, Brave Man's game has been pretty much foot perfect over fences so far. He looks like he's improved for a fence. Um, He was very good over, over hurdles. He was a grade one winner. And then he was placed in two grade ones at spring festivals. Ahoy Senor beat him and beat him convincingly at Aintree. Um, now, look, Brave Man's Game had had that race at Cheltenham. That may have taken the edge off of him. Um, that being said, that was only Ahoy Senor's second run over hurdles. So I think it's it's pretty close between them. As you said, Andrew, Ahoy Senor does have him over, um, on, on their hurdle form. Ahoy Senor also looks like he's improved for, for chasing. So... Um, yeah, I, I look, I'm going to stick with Brave Man's game, but this is going to be a fantastic race. Can't wait to watch it. And um, yeah, that's the main thing I'm looking forward to is watching it. I don't think I'll be back in either of them, but uh, yeah, it should be an absolute classic. Yourself? Oh, I see, you all day. All day, every day. All day, every day. I'll have a match bet with Tom and all if you want. Yeah, I'll have a match bet just for a sake of a match bet because you you've backed him, you've you've put him up before Hoy Senor, and I've put Brave Man's game up. So yeah, I'll have a match bet with you, Dave. You won't be two points already for an off show uh off show little punt. So uh, uh, yeah, I was I got screwed over now. What was it? Yeah. He won't the time won fair and square. What was it? Lockdown. Yeah, it's uh I got screwed though. I did. Oh, sorry, just, the stake was close. The stake was close anyway. Sorry, but, I asked. Yeah, but I got screwed. Would you like a debate on the on the coronavirus? Just shut right? up. <laughs> My God. I think oh hi senor all day long as well. I know the track is a lot tighter than um when he won around Newbury the last day. He won an entry though. It's true, he won an entry, but um I think his jumping is an asset. No Brave Man's games jumping is an asset as well, but I think it's a high senior is I think he's just that bit quicker. I think there's a bit of speed to him as well, as well as a good stare. Um, so I don't think the track will inconvenience him. Look, there's going to be some battle too. Whether they keep Brave Man's game up front with him or not now is another thing. But I think a high senior has his number. So he will be quite a strong fancy for me in this. So that's where... It's great to see both of them going here, isn't it? And like mm. this, is a, this is a proper race. Like proper, proper race between those two. Yeah. Uh, right, moving on to the Christmas hur- Christmas hurdle. We have Epitant in a three to four on not so sleepy eleven to four. So on glory sixes, Tritonic sixes, Goshen nine to one, Glory and Fortune thirty three to one. Um, it was interesting to see today that Nikki came out and said that they want to see does she stay two four and go for the mayor's hurdle because he's shying away from the challenges. <laughs> That's 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 why they're running their hair over two miles, is it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's why it makes sense as well in that regard. Anyway, it's Nikki for you. Um, but she's vulnerable, as we know now. Not so sleepy. Mm. Um, dead heat with her the last day. So Glory has the fine Tritonic um, was on the back of a, a good win at Ascot the other day. Goshen. <sighs> God only knows what will happen to him. Now, he, he looks like a horse that needs a trip. And uh, Glory and Fortune probably doesn't have a chance against these. So where are we going, Dave? What way do we look at it? 
I think it's a poor enough race, really. It for, is for, for the grade. It's oh, never really a good bad. race, though. It's never um, is really a good race. No. So Royale ran poor enough the last day, so maybe that race at Newcastle was a, a bit of a slog. Um, so I'd be looking at Soar and Glory and Tritonic. I just don't think Soar and Glory is up for it, so I kind of fell on Tritonic. Now, he might not run because he only ran last week, but he looked more the finished article last week, so I'd go for him each way. Tom, what about you? I, I think Epiton will uh, get the better of um of, of not so sleepy here. I think I think Nico it's interesting actually Nico's on her. Uh I wonder I wonder has Aiden got dropped off or is he going somewhere else? Um I've quick just give me two uh it doesn't save his books anyway. So I presume he's going somewhere else. Would have been pretty harsh to jock him off. Um but yeah, I, I look. I, I think she's got the more potential to get the better, and not so sleepy. Um, would I back her at four to five? No, I wouldn't. Um, Sora Glory, I think a better run race. We'll see him run better. We said that about him last week. He is interesting enough, but there's only six runners. Um, and then Tritonic. This is eight days after his win, so that's backing up pretty quickly. So I oh, look. I, I'd have it. I'd, I'd have Epiton getting the better of not so sleepy again here. Um, but yeah, it's never, it's never, never. A massively fantastic races. And I think they're right with her to go to the mayor's, the mayor's hurdle that as we've highlighted on the show a couple of times now is, is a weak enough division this year, I feel. And, um, they're not going to beat, they're not going to beat, um, Honeysuckle, they know that. So I think ten to one. I'm just looking ten to one about Epiton for the mayor's hurdle is fair enough. I think. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Uh, Kevin in the comments said Coleman is suspended. Oh yes, he is. That's correct. So that makes sense of all that. Um, look, Epiton looks. She's a seven-year-old on an eight mayor. Um, she's kind of after losing that bit of speed. Uh, especially when you see not so steep again and back on her in the um the fight in fifth. I don't know what way to look at this. It's a poor enough race. If Epiton has gone back past her best, not so sleepy is nine, is not gonna improve anymore. He is a very tough horse. He's the highest rated in it. Well, if you take Epiton's allowance into consideration, they're giant rated with um um, Epitant, Soren Glory, I don't like him at all. Tritonic was in the back of a very good win the last day, and is the one that could be improving. And, and a price of seven to one, look, he's probably worth taking a chance with because not so sleepy is not guaranteed to back up that run. <laughs> Epitant to me will either bolt up or run badly. There's no not going to be any in between, she'll either win or be beaten badly. Um. Look, it's not it's not one I probably will have a bet in, but Tritonic, if I was, would be the one I'd take a chance on. Four year old improving, um, on the back of a good win, uh, yeah, I'd take a chance with that. So I would. Um, right, moving on to the King George Grade One over three miles. Uh, we have Indo Clan de Zubo eleven to four. Frodan nine to two. Shitry House and nine to two. Asterian Kaboom. 11 to 2, lost in translation 10, St. Gavin 16, Tornado Flyer 22, Master, Mr. Fisher 33, Dashel Dasher 50s. Right. Chantry House or a steering kaboom? Me? Yes. I think this is a deadly race. Uh, usually the... These are your two little babies now. Yeah, You've been plotting the, for this race. Usually the King George can be... Some of the horses come out and it'll be a bit of a disappointment. Um... Does sometimes Stephen's Day is hard to get winners though? It, can be a it is. Old day. There's too much. There's too much going on. So, you don't know where to look. Uh, I think that Dashel Drasher will probably lead him. I think he'll run better than his price suggests. But yes, I think in my opinion it's between Asteroid Kaboom and Chantry House. Really? Yep. I like Manel Endo a lot. After seeing him out in Henry's as well, he's just a an unbelievable looking horse. He's but a specimen. His main day is going to be Cheltenham again, trying to regain the Gold Cup. Um, he does have a bit of speed, so I'm a little bit worried about the track for him, but he does have a bit of speed. He's not just a, a three-mile plotter like Royale. 
Uh, Treating my plotter suddenly run <laughs> over two miles. Um, Asteroid is going to win a big race, but he's an idiot. His so he's going to do something wrong again. He's definitely going to hit one fence. No, his problem is he hits wings. The wings of the fence is not not the plastic pass, but the actual outside the birch part of the wings. See, he's just he sees that and he just goes, "I'll pretend I'm a rugby player and try to tackle this." He's super talented. It's all. Good form, grade one form. He went into a handicap. He bolted up. Um, I'm fairly certain he would have walked that race uh, a couple of weeks back. John, John, Dorkin. John Dorkin. But he's liable to do anything. And it'll be going pretty fast, I'd say. So he just worries me. But I think he's a great chance if he stays up. I just don't think you are, Tom. <laughs> Give Shantry House the credit he deserves. Um, Coming out novice company. Big step up. Was a poor, like, obviously a two runner race around Sandown the last time, but like, he absolutely battered the horse 30, 40 odd lengths. It was good time. Um, couple of grade ones last year, pretty sure he would have won that grade one now from what we've seen from Envoy Allen afterwards. Um, in Cheltenham, anyway, you just can't knock his form. And that grade one was franked, um, by Sham Blue, um, who would have won at uh, was Weatherby. Warwick Weatherby. Weatherby. Um, he was bolting up in that race. Asterian came out, came out after coming third in that race and won the handicap at Punchestown and then was going to win the John Durkin. So the form is strong. I just he's the right age, right profile. Um he's run over two miles in the Supreme, he's run over two and a half miles, so definitely fast enough and plenty of speed around Kempton. I, I think he's a right good chance. I think Chantry has his number. I think Chantry ch- ch- has ch- a ch- ch- number. Ch- yeah. Do you not uh, beat him before? Yeah, and for him he does in, in the, the marsh last year, but like a steering jump badly then as well. Like, yeah, it's on left handed so left handed track as well. Right handed track. But I think they're the two to concentrate. I, I they they're I'd love to I text you during the week. If Manena didn't know win, wins fair enough, uh, it'd be great for Henry and super horse. He's unreal horse to look at, but I just think from Breton proposition, Chantry House and Kaboom. It's level two a bit short for uh, a kaboom who wins. He won before that one's the last time he won for Punchestown. Uh, he won on the 14th of November 2020, beating Conflation. Then he fell, fell, fourth, third, third. He's crazy, like, like to be honest, you'll probably get a bigger price on Stevens Day. You might get eight to one. Yeah. You, about, you are backing him in the context that he's probably there's a 50 50 chance he's going to fall. It's more like 60 40. That's <laughs> it. Like, you're, you're, you're going to eventually get him at a good price and he'll win, and you'll be like, that today was the day. But you know, I think Willie Mullins said, God only knows what he's going to do. That is, no one knows. Tom, are you a fan of the kaboom or, or, or are we looking at Clan Desoba and just. Taking him out altogether on his price. 11 to 4 to me looks a bit short for him, especially. Look, I know he, he beat Album 4 at a punch down last season, but he's a horse that seems to need come on for a run as well. In this in this field, uh, with him as favor, I would take him on all day long. Um, Asterian, I said on the show the last day, I went for his form. His best, best form is a punch down. Um, I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to go back to Punchestown um, completely unnoticed, and uh, and and give him give him a go there. Um, this is this is a, a loaded race, lads. They're really loaded race. You got Manella Indo there, the Gold Cup winner. You got Frode on last year's last year's winner. You 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 just can't write him off, can you? Asterian. Fett knows what he's going to do. Shantry House, I don't like him, but in fairness, his form is stacking up now. I will just take him on all the time, though. Um, Lost in Translation has bounced back to form there um, with his run this season. Say Calvados was fourth in this last year. First run for Paul Nichols. You couldn't write him off. Mr. Fisher is the kind of donkey that would come and pop up in this there at some stage, wouldn't he? Um, No. And then Dash, yeah, he'd surprise you, wouldn't he? It, it would just, it's just something like Mr. Fisher to happen. He gets tanked in handicaps when you think he's a certainty, and then uh, and then goes and wins something like this. He um, does tend to win when you least expect it, all right? Yeah, yeah. Like he was only beating the neck by <laughs> last day. I, I wouldn't. I just, it just would not surprise me. 
And then Dasher Drasher is 66 to 1. And if he bounced back to his very best form, even though that's at Ascot, you'd give him a little squeak as well. Um, the one I've missed out there on purpose is Tornado Flyer. And this might be unpopular. He's 25 to 1. And out of all of those horses, if I'm going to take a punt on an outsider, Tornado Flyer is the one for me. Um, I thought he was very eye catching the last day, running on, uh, running on at Punchestown in uh, in the John Durkin behind Alaho. Um, I thought that was that was a lovely race, uh, a lovely run. Sorry, um, he's got plenty of speed for this. Now, whether he stays three miles is, is the is the query. However, the way he stayed on the last day, you'd hope he'd have a chance of getting it. And if he's going to get it somewhere, it'd be around Kempton. Um, I think they'll ride him a bit more patiently, and I, I think they'll ride him to finish. Really? Uh, I think him as an each way bet is pretty good. He was third in the Ryanair last time, uh, last year, um, or last season, um, and he's also he's been won. third in the Champion Bumper. So twice that he's travelled over to the UK, he's ran well. Um, I'd, I'd just give him a squeak, twenty-five to one. I'd be happy to take a punt. Um, Manella Indo Henry's horses weren't exactly fire in October, so and he I know he won his last race, but uh, I know he won last season on his first start. But I, I think every time you look at that horse, you would imagine he'll come on fitness wise for the run. He was pitched in at the deep end, and I, I do think he'll come on. Um, I'd have him as probably the most likely winner. Um, but a betting proposition, Tornado Fly 25 to 1, I'll have a little each way on that. Fair enough. Um, the way I'm looking at this, like, there's going to be pace to it. You're, you're going to have, if Dash or Dash runs, he's going to go up with Frodon, and I think and I think that'll upset Frodon. I think that'll get him going too soon. Brian won't be out of control like she did last year. And um, you'll have Manila Indo in behind the pace. If Clan's going to be in behind the pace, I assume your flange be on his arse by then. <laughs> Um, you've lost the translation or goes in the front as well sometimes um, I just think there's going to be a lot of pace to this and I think prior to other years it's going to take someone that stays a bit further not stay a bit further but a proper stayer to win this and I think I think Manel Indoor just wins this I think he's by far the best horse in the race he's the Gold Cup winner again he doesn't get the credit for winning the Gold Cup I don't know why Um third last time out after taking about two million blows around down royal was a good run in hindsight he'll come on for the run i just think he's buying far the best horse of race i know there's a lot of questions about the track form i just think he's the class of him will get him away with it um a steer for lunge would be the danger if he stays on his feet i can't have clan because I think he just comes on for his runs, and you can, I know Paul Nix is good at getting him ready first time out. Lost in translation, yes, he won last time out, but if you go back and watch the race, he finished just in front of um, Master Tommy Tucker, um, four lengths. But you go back and watch that, and you look how many fences Master Tommy Tucker whacked, and look how close they were going to between the second last and last. He need to come on a big time for that again. Um, he might even have bad memories of this place. Got pulled up two years in a row in it. Um, so I could rule him out. Mr. Fisher, I, tu- I turn off the telly. I would turn off the telly if he won this. <laughs> anyway, you turn off the telly. On last year. I did turn <laughs> off the telly. This is going to be another Thomas Darby moment, isn't it? You're just going to get me tweets saying, Andrew, turn off the telly. Yeah, pretty much, but it's not going to happen. Um, but all in all, I think Manella Indo is by far the best horse in the race. And I think he'll take some beating in it. I think he'll stay and go up the straight. So Manella la, 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 Indo for me at... What is he? 11 to 4. That will do for me. Um, right. On to the racing post, Novice Chase. Grade 1 over 2 mile, 1 far long. We have Fernie Hollow in a 7 to 10 arm. We have Riviere de Tell at 7 to 4. Dancing on my own at 10s. Core Sublime at 11s. Grand Bornard at 14s. Gallant John Joe at 40s. And Zof- Zofini? Zofanian. 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 66 to 1. Go on. Fernie Hollow is your man. This thing's going to bolt up. He's going to bolt up. Mm-hmm. 
and you're gonna you're gonna give the mayor a load of weight and it's gonna bolt up and there's people out there talking about taking him on and this mayor is unbelievable and she's jumps very good this joke is an absolute Louis tune unbelievable horse yeah, I think the way the race, if this Riviera de Tell goes off like the Clappers, I think it's going to suit Forney yeah. a lot better. I think he, he'll be a better horse held up off a strong pace. I'd say... Creep his way into the race and off he goes. That was 50% Forney the last day. And just when they asked, when Patrick asked him to race over the last four fences, like, oh, okay, so let's have a last to this. What about you, Tom? You think the same? Yeah, I am, actually. I'm a, the mayor gets £13. Pounds. She's a she's a four-year-old filly. Um, but you know, you look at her form, and her, her form is good, but I, she hasn't taken on anything the like of, of Fernie Hollow. Um, I just think that's a different league for her altogether. Um, you know, and she is getting that allowance for a reason as well. She is a four-year-old. I know she's about to be five, but she is a four-year-old filly. Um, I, look, I, I think he'll give it away. To, I, I, I think... I, I love that she's in there because she's kind of making the market from she wasn't in there and you want to four wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and and the fact that I'm pretty convinced that he'll beat her you know 11 to 10 or 10 to 11 I think you can get you know I'm quite happy with that for him to be honest I, I think it's a fair enough bet he's two to one now for the Arkel in a round uh nine to four maybe going to win this and it'll be odds on because appreciate it's gone he'll be about seven to four if he wins this he'll be going to be even money odds on because there's nothing else in the race the english horses are not good enough mm. i intend to agree um right that was quick enough for any hollow for the chivas uh next we head off to limerick for the fahi novice chase uh we have gabanaco 15 to 8 uh fakur Dene delan at uh, three to one, Fury Road at fives, Mister Incredible sixes, Cape General on eights, Lifetime Vision eights, Beacon Edge nines, Vanillier tens, and twelve to one, bigger rest. Tom Gabanaco puts in a better round wins. Well, yeah, I thought he put in a in a good round the last day. Um, up until okay. the last two, um, up until the last two, when you know he did he did well to stand up. I think I think Darrow went a bit fast on him in front because he was traveling and jumping so well. Um, I think he'll conserve that a little bit more this time, and um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really sweet on him. Um, I know Gordon's come out and big up Farrakh Delen. Um, he's he's really sweet on him. He he beat Vanilla last year, and he came out and beat Blue Sari there. Um, Blue Sari. Um, by three quarters of the length, Keskon Risk was going to win that race, but got injured after the last, which was devastating, to be honest. Um, but yeah, he he's bigging him up, but on the form, and I, I love the way he jumps and travels Gavin Acker. He's so much better over fences than he was hurdles. And um, yeah, I, I'm really sweet on him, to be honest. Hopefully going to be up at Limerick as well on Stephen's Day, uh, so consuming the flesh. Uh, we've got our very own Shona is most likely to run, um, and we should have Baron Wild in the first as well. So, could be a good day out, hopefully. All being well. Well, you weren't here last time we reviewed Gap and Akko, and you were in the same view with Tom. Yeah, I thought he jumped great. I thought the jockey made a mistake the last couple of fences, and he really should have won. Dara should have had two great ones that day, but sure, that's the way it goes. Um, He's definitely way better or better over fences, but for a for a horse to be that short that just doesn't win all that much is, I think, it's a strange enough market. Mm -hmm. There's to me, like, there's no real superstar in it. Like, is there? There's nothing you can count on. Fury Road don't want to win. Like, he, he gives up when he gets to the front. Um, Farouk Delen, I don't know. <laughs> Mister Incredible got absolutely bet around. Newbury off our mm -hmm. high senior lifetime ambition looked very good, then terrible the next day. Beacon Edge, I mean, he looked like he wanted the three miles the last time. I know he won, but he mm -hmm. looks Vanillier. I like, but I like when he goes three miles, he's definitely not fast enough. So, I don't know, it's just a strange race. Here is um, a question then because I've seen a couple of people in the comments are on about um Gabinaco and his price. Who would you have shorter than him in the market? I can't see 
Yeah, but I I want him to be like four to one the field. Yeah, yeah. They're not. There's not enough in it to do that, though. Is there? I don't think. Probably not. Because you, uh, you have that race in a leper sound as well. That few of them might actually go to the three miler. Yeah, I imagine uh, Fury Road would go for that. To be honest, he looks way more like a three miler. He's run against Gavin Ackwood twice, and he's beat, got beaten twice. I imagine he'll go there. Cape Gentleman's off the back of the four lifetime ambition was very promising until he got smashed by Gavin Ackwood as well the last day. Beacon Edge. A miracle, he won the last day once three miles. Mr. Incredible, I'd say he had a very hard race the last day. Vanillier wants three miles. Bernie Hollow won run here. And then you're into Fire Attack, Run Wild. Fred won run here. Blueberry Bustleton. I don't see what beats him unless you listen to the hype of Gordon on Farrak Delen. Um, you know, I, I think two to one's pretty fair, to be honest. I'm uh, I'm going to settle on Master Maxi each way. I think he ran in. I think Bob's um, yeah. beginner's chase was actually a decent beginner's chase with Bacardi's in there, Coccolino in there, Dio Carr was in there, um, Column of Fire. There was lots of decent horses in that race. He came third, 16 odd lengths behind Bob. I don't think being beaten by Bob 16 lengths is, is actually not a bad run. Um, second run over fences, I think the trip will actually suit him. And if he goes there, I'd back him each way. Yeah, can't argue with that really. He's he was a decent hurdler. Yeah, won a few big handicaps. Um, yeah, I I kind of look. I said my piece about Gavin Acker last day. If I didn't think it was a good round of jumping, you know, all in all, but if he do, if he lessens the mistakes, I think he beats these very handy. Um, Farklen beat Blue Sari the last time. We know all know how far Blue Sari has come down, and now we can question how good is that bumper now. Yeah, with Envoyan the way he's turned out, he was a neck behind him in the champion bumper. Um, so I think that look, this could be a good bet at two to one. As Tom said, who would you put in front of him? Fury Road needs fur a Cape Gentleman. He's just not up to that class. Lifetime ambition could, but needs to come back from a below par run. Um, and I think Beacon Edge is going to Leperstown. Uh, Mr. Incredible, I think, will actually will go here because they dropped him down a trip after being beat by a high senior over um, three miles. So he could be the each way look at this at nine to one. But all in all, for win purpose, I think Gavin Ako will beat him um, if he cuts out the mistakes. So Gavin Ako. I, mean, I, I think that'll be a small field as well, guys, going yeah. through. You could go elsewhere there. Because you have a, you have that, as I said, that race at Leperstown, the three mile novice chase, I think it's on the 29th or 28th. I think a few of them will go there as well. Yeah. Right, now we're moving on to the 27th. And the Welsh Grand National over three miles, six furlongs. And we have last year winner Secret Reprieve in a 24 to 5. The big dog, six, sixes. Highland Hunter, sixes. Hold that thought, sevens. Daisha Abba, twelves. Hill, sixteen, twelves. I will do it at 12s, Midnight Thunder 13s, Rams at the tie, 16s, Native River 16s. Oh, God, there's so many in it. Uh, just a bit of bad news for Chepso. They're going behind closed doors for why I don't know. Bullshit reasons. Babe. Bullshit reasons. Scotland are gone the same. Um, but anyway, um, always a hugely competitive rave race. We have. <coughs> Secret Reprieve is the defending champion. We have a former champion and former Gold Cup winner in Native River. Um, looking like he's going to turn up. Um, uh, but Tom, pick it apart. How are we looking at this? And uh, what is the best bet in this? Not uh Scooby Doo. I haven't a clue either. I I haven't a clue in this race. You can make a case for a lot of them. The big dog is very interesting going over. He looked very good last year and then bombed out a bit. Um, Secret Reprieve could still be very well handicapped as form at the track, which counts for so much at, at Chepstow. I think if he would have had a run, even if he would have got beaten his prep run, I think he'd be even shorter for this. Um, to be honest, off Ken Stone, he's probably my pick. Um, Highland Hunter is obviously one who's getting in under a penalty for Paul Nichols. Um, he'd have a chance as well. It's not very original, but with Native River keeping the weight, so 
Um, I know, I know he hasn't had a prep run, but Evan Williams is well able to get one fit. And if he goes on the slightly better ground, then um, then I think I think Secret Reprieve will take a lot of beating. But you're tipping a five to one favourite then in a Welsh national. It's not an original, is it? It just goes to show how competitive it is. Like we can't, you can't, you're kind of trying to break it down into what is what way to go into it at who has form or form and then you're looking there's a lot of them that are not much for muchness but have question marks the answer off off the, le- the levels they are you've secret reprieve um last year's winner but doesn't have the run behind him you've Highland hunter who won his prep run so he's probably higher in the waist than paul nickers would have wanted him to be so is he going to is he going to like be as fresh as he he was when he won. Seagull Reprieve again is what seven pounds higher than he won last year. The big dog would be interesting on the back. He won the Irish Grand National Trial last year at Punchestown. He if he gets it together, he could have a big shout as well. Okay, oh, you could go through all of them and give them all a chance. Is the one you nail down is the hard thing? Who are you nailing down? A native river each way. I think uh, a lot of these slogs, you, you you get older horses like that have been there, done it, will pop back up again. Um, he's still running in top company, dropping back into a handicap. Like he's carrying top weight, but a lot of these horses would have no hope in graded races and stuff like that. Um, he's run around the course. Chepso is a strange old track as well. Like Tom said, course form stands for a lot. And you can jump badly here and just be too far back to get back into the race. Mm-hmm. He won't do that because he'll be up forcing the pace. But is he not gone? I know it's, it's, it's a three mile six now, but he's not gone that slow that he has to work that extra bit harder to get himself up at the that pace might be the case but then it's an extra extra distance it's not three miles it's three miles six so it'll be going a little bit slower mm. i just think 16 to one you, you might even get 20 to one on the day like he's the he's still the class horse in the race he's the, the fire still burns in him as well he like he's still running his heart out so like you get you get he's the trip he wants and you get the ground he wants as well because he wants a bit of soft ground you know, he'll give it his all. So you can easily see him run a huge race. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I, can I throw a really random one at you? Achilles. No. Um, <laughs> uh, elegant escape was nine to four favorite for this two years ago, and I thought there was no way he could get beat. To be honest, um, he won the race back in twenty eighteen. He had 631 days off the track. They ran him in a hurdle race at Sandown um, on the 4th of December. Uh, Go back and watch the race if you haven't seen it. Um, He drops out the camera and then all of a sudden he flies on again. That was over two miles. He had had absolutely no chance. He's six pounds lower than he was when he was 9-4 favourite. I know that's two years ago. You've taken a lot on trust. but he's got that he's got that Chepstow form. Um, he is twenty to one. Don't don't be surprised if he goes and does it. But it's a it's a random race to be honest. That's it's never one I have too much of an opinion in. I think he was the last one I had a big opinion in, and I got burnt for that. So uh, the one I, the one I'm going to take a chance on is one I mentioned earlier is the big dog. One a kind of similar not similar race, but. Uh, race near this distance at Pontchartrain on the Grand National Trial over three mile four on heavy ground last year, beating screaming colours. He done everything he could after jumping the last to get beat. He pulled himself up. He oiled the whole way, and he still got won by um, half a length. Just going back two runs ago, he went off two to one um, behind Ecclaire in a race <laughs> at Wexford. Um, but he ran no soccer race. Then he had a little prep run over hurdles and um, behind Commander Fleet before that. Johnny Burke is on board. Johnny's on, in very good form. I think 10 stone 8 is a fair weight for him. Um, still has to get a secret reprieve, 7 pounds, but I think he might be up to it. And I think at look, 7 to 1 is about, it's short enough if we're honest about it. But I think on the day, is a race on the day where you actually you better off backing because 
bookmakers get kind of generous in these kind of races. Take them all on, it, on the day. yeah. So um, a few pounds Stevens day, and they'll take everything yeah. on the day. So I I imagine the big dog um will be there fighting it out. At the end, he's there or stay there. We love the ground. Um, be up with the pace. So, yeah, the big dog for me at uh, seven to one. Um, right. Just a reminder for anyone who has just joined us, we have four enhanced doubles for the Christmas period, and I will just go through them quickly again. So the first one is Florin Porter to win the Christmas hurdle at Leperstown and Aplutard. Oh, hold up now, this stuff. I'll just get rid of these banners. And Aplutard to win the Savage Chase um, at Leperstown is now six to one for the double. And then we have Sharjah to win the Madison's hurdle and Asterian for launch to win the King George at 14 and a half to one. And then we have Fernie Hollow to win the Ro- Racing Post Novice Chase and a high senior to win the Quarter Star Novice Chase now at five to one. And the last one we have is Epitant to win the uh, Christmas, Christmas hurdle. hurdle at Kempton and Clan de Zobo to win the King George at 13 to 2. All these prices are on Hollywood Vets right now under the finish line boost and are available until midnight tonight, Wednesday the 22nd. Whew. Now, where are we? We are going back to Leperstown and we are going for the Nagamene show. Uh, Nagamene 4 to 9 on Shaq and Puss at 13 to 5. Roy Allen at 11s. Sam Crow 28 to 1. Battle over Dion 33. Size and Potsy at 40 to 1. Do we know if Shaq is running? Someone say he got his toe. His toe. Shashan. Shashan got his toe. Something happened to his toe in him. Um... <coughs> Sandow. I have no idea. Anurgamene. Somebody, uh, something happened to him. Anurg- but Anurgamene Anurgamene him. Anurg- 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 and then they're going to man, man, man. Definitely, we'll win. Oh. You're right, Tom. Thomas, he's not oh, there. Oh, yeah, actually, pits, lads. Um, yeah. He's very cold up late, isn't he? Anurg- Anurgamene, um, Anurgamene, um, Anurgamene, Anurg- Anurg- um, yeah, look, I, I, I think you're going to win. I can't see Willie running shacking against him here. Very interesting if, um, if Envoy Allen steps back and trip and, and we'll see what he can do. Sam Crow, this would look too short these days. Um, yeah, I, I look, I think I can't see both of Willie's running. And if they do, happy days, bring it on. But uh, I can't I can't see it happening. So, yeah, I think Anurga you know, he's, he's one for the Akers maybe, isn't he? Yeah, maybe one to win this and win the... the... Champion Chase, the gentleman. Ask Dave's opinion on Battle Over Dying. That Battle Over Yak. So shit. And I'm and I'm glossing over the fact that you haven't even mentioned your lover boy. Ah, look, uh, they're just dropping him down the trip to see what happens. Battle Over Dying is useless. He's a dog shit horse. He's Battle literally won. He's literally won fifty percent of the races he's running, and he's won over two hundred grand in prize money. And Why don't you back him so Tom? This, this, Why don't you back him? This, do you know what? This argument happens every Christmas. It's Battle Over Dion. I think it started when he ran in a race to Faheen won at Leperstone, the novice chase. Who do you want, so in a match bet against him? Two time grade one winner. Battle Who do you want in a match bet? Um, who's closest in price to him? Let me have a look. Okay, size and potsy. That shut you up. Size and potsy was second behind him last day. I'll, I'll take size and potsy. <laughs> That's going to be a cracking match, but I can't wait for that. Then. I'll take size and potsy. Fucking battle over dog shit will be pulled up. So <laughs> negative. They're both ranked 155, so there you go. That'll be interesting. It's a fair bet. Useless fucking horse. <laughs> he is. Oh, I can't move. Oh, <laughs> he told us I like, know who's the oldest person in the podcast. <clears throat> oh. Me, apparently. See, this is why you I gave are. up. This is a, the prime example why I gave up football. I have a bottle of wine for you. Bottle of vodka for him. I have a bottle of vodka for him. Fuck why don't, I, I, ha- why don't I have it now? Huh? Why don't I have it now? I could do it now. It's downstairs. It's downstairs. It's downstairs. I, I could really of vodka. do. Bottle of vodka. I could, me really do. You, I could do a few glasses of vodka now, to be honest. <laughs> I have a bottle. Have a bottle of vodka, or you can have gin. You can, well, I prefer the gin myself because I don't drink vodka, but I don't really drink any of it. So, I'll, so have, I'll have the vodka at the lovely and espresso martinis fans day. It's in the car waiting for you. Lovely. You're going to drive it up to him? No, no. When he comes down, I'll give it to him. So you'll have that for next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right, moving on to the Paddy Power Future Champion Novice Hurdle. We've Largy debut at 5 2, Kilcrut at 5 2. Uh, Mighty Porter 72 Grangi for Sir Gerhard 6 3, Strike Blythe at 6s. Uh, what, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And far out 14 is 20 to 1, bigger the rest. Giant favourites, Largy debut and Kilcrut. <coughs> Kilcrut has defined with Largy debut and going on what was said. There was no excuse the last time Mighty Porter won well the last time Grangy won well the last time. Sir Gerhardt surely won't run this. And then we three striped lives to sixes. So, Dave, what are you looking at in this one? Uh, I hope three striped life runs because that's who I'd go for. But it's hard to know, Willie, after being taken out the last day. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's ground or something. But I hope he runs. I'd look away then from... Uh, Largy debut in Kilcrud form and go for him but uh, I'm surprised they're running Kilcrud again over two miles I thought they'd go up and trip so did I so I would not be confident in Largy debut if Kilcrud shows up because probably means that he wasn't fit and he'll turn the tables think so yeah I could see it happening if if Willie runs Kilcrud over two miles again I think that's just a, t- a tip in itself yeah against the horse that already beat him Oh, Willie really doesn't show you away from things. He's it won't be the first time. It. it won't be the first time Willie had a horse that was really well. He was one to fourteen. He was very much expected to win, but was beaten. Like Fahin lost on his first time out one season, and amongst others. So, yeah, but they can't, they've, come, they've come out and say there's no excuses. We got beef, beef fair and square. Yeah. Um, uh, they are, look, they uh, rarely tell the truth. I know. know. <laughs> um, I think if if they turn up again, I think Larry Day will still beat him. I think if you, look, take Larry Day be out and a kill crop one that race he would have won it by 24 lengths and you put someone else if you said another horse would have finished 10 lengths in front of him that day you said Jesus Christ that thing must be a weapon look I'm not saying he is a weapon but I I wouldn't, wouldn't know what, did not know much of him until he won the last day and I watched the back loads of times jumped well barred the second last where he made a hot where he made an absolute bad mistake and put the stance to but this is what the, impressed me about it. He got back into a stride very quickly and he kept going away from Kilcrush. I think if he comes on from that run again, which he probably will because that was his um, that was his first run of the season. He hadn't run till March um, of last year was his last run. So that was his first run out. I think there could be a lot more to come from this fella. They seem to like him a lot. So... Yeah, I, I would be quite confident that he would uphold a form um, with Kill Crush. Three Stripes Life, look, there's no secret about it. We really like him. Um, I just want to see him run again. Grongy was good the last day. Uh, Mighty, uh, Mighty Porter was, was, was yes, it's a fair, she's fairly arsenic, but yeah, I think Largy debut, Largy debut for me. What about you, Tom? Uh, it's a really interesting race, isn't it? Um, you know, there's, it, what's interesting first off is who's going to run here. Um, I'm not too surprised to see Kill Crut still over two miles. Um, I think they'll give him another chance after the last day. I don't, I don't think that was fully his showing. I do think Largy debut is very good, though, and I wouldn't be surprised if he went beat him again. Um, Mighty Potter is the one I would probably take on. Ran away on the last day, but I'd probably take him on. Uh, Grangy was very good, I thought. Um, didn't beat a lot at all, but was very good in doing so. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see her place in this, depending on how many turn up. Um, so Gerhard is in here. Uh, he hasn't even run over hurdles yet, but uh, but he's entered. Um, yeah, the one the one I'd I'd give a shout to as well is Free Stripe Life if he turned up. Um, I think he gets a little bit forgotten, maybe because of the colours he runs in sometimes, even. Um, but uh, no, I, he didn't beat anything on his on his hurdling debut either. But ran very well in the champion bumper, um, and still looks a big green baby. So even if he did run in this and, and just ran okay, I think he'd come on for it. Um, Willie then has a whole heap of horses down the bottom that are four year olds that haven't run uh, in a long time. Um, so if he ran any of those, you'd have to say note as well. But uh, really tricky race, and I'd probably just take free stride life. No cooler, bula. <coughs> Oi, 
that is that out of the way. Let's hope they actually turn up. <laughs> it's a race where you can actually see it cutting up, can't you? A lot. Yeah, you just wouldn't know what would run in that. Right, moving on to one of the easier races of the week, the Paddy Power Chase. <laughs> Boss's Oscar, 17-2, Alpha Mix, 72, Conflace, 15-2, Nobody is 10, School by the Hours, 12s, Fully Charged, 13s, Longhouse Boat, 13s, uh, Breeside, 13s, Laura Roy, 16s, and the rest of them are there as well. Who wants to take this one? Yeah, I put up School by Hours and it was last back last year sometime. Um I was full sure he's will win a, a big handicap. His form first time out the last few years has kind of been his best race. Um he pushed latest exhibition all the way last year in their beginner's chase. And then he looked like one that would be a, a handicap horse for Cheltenham and didn't run there. His last run then was um behind that steering for lunch and the, the grade A handicap at Punchdown Festival. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with him each way. I think he, he will eventually win a big handicap like this. And uh, Noel Mead's horse has been flying all year. Fair enough. Tom, you? Um, I've got one for this, actually, lads. Um, a horse I liked in his novice, in his novice hurling season. Um, I didn't quite live up to it. Longhouse Poet. Um, I think it, the little bit of better ground will, will suit him as well. Um, he does wear tongue tight and he's gone well on it. Uh, he actually beat Monkfish in a bumper at Punchestown on good to yielding ground. Um, decent form then as a novice. Um, got beat seven lengths by Envoy Allen. Um, and then and then two and a bit lengths by latest exhibition and then bombed out at Cheltenham. Um, a decent enough season chasing when you it actually looked a bit disappointed. Um, but he was second behind Janadil, and then when he stepped up and trip, he actually beat Run Wild Fred on his last start. That was in December 20. Um, he beat Run Wild Fred, the big dog, and opposites attract in the beginner's chase. Um, nothing, nothing bad about that form at all. Um, he's been off the track now 361 days. He's rated 145. I totally accept this is his first start in a handicap. Um, Darrow Keefe has dropped up the ride. Martin Brassel is a very good trainer. Um, so yeah, I would give I'd give Longhouse Poet a shot here. Um, I have one as well. I'd actually really like in this, and it's a wave of C. I put him off for a big handicap there, and um, but he got pulled out a few weeks ago. He's um stepped up and tripped this season to three miles, and it seemed to suit him a lot. He was six lengths behind the symbol over at Listol. He was in the Kerry National, um, and then he was two and a half, two and a quarter lengths behind on the ropes in the Munster National at Cork. Got he was up at the pace and a lot that time. He dropped back, but he ran on really strongly again. This again is going to be run an end to end gallop. Um, he has experience in big fields. Uh, he's course form. He won a two mile, two and a half mile, two mile, um, handicap chase, beating Top Moon. Back in 2021, that the Dublin Race Festival 2021. So he has no problems about actually the course and the three miles stepping up, I think is going to suit him. He's a five year old, so he's going to keep, he's not stopped um, improving. He's off 105 to three, carries 11 stone four. Um, I think he could play a big hand in this um, wave of the sea at 16 to one. Is the one for me. If you want an each way bet or a placed only bet, lads, the boss is Oscar. Oh, second. Second itis. Yeah. He'll be back there again, won't he? Oh, yeah. He'll be. He's He'll play, be placed itis is what he is. Um, right. We move on again. And we this time we are going back to Kempton for the Desert Orchid Chase, where Shiskin is 1-2 to two on. Grenadine is 13-8. Fumble, Savola is 6 Sky Pirate 8 and before midnight is 12. What is the story with Shiskin? Is he running or does he have to do a bit of work or what the hell is happening with him? I have no idea. I don't know what to make of this race because you don't know if Shiskin's running or not. I hope he does run because it'd be good to see him run like, but I doubt he will. I don't think he will. I think the more he's saying he's ready to go, he puts it off, ready to go, and then he puts it off again. There must be something going on. He must. There must be a niggly little injury or some sort. 
I, I, I think you're reading too much into it. I, I think that is what Nikki is saying out loud and in detail to the public is exactly what racehorse trainers think in their own mind and say to their owners and say to their their top staff and jockeys all the time. Um, you know, most of them are pessimistic people who are like, okay, yeah, he's got to get through this one gallop and, and whatever. And, you know, a day a day is a long time in a horse's career. Look at Buzz sure, um, doing his last little canter and he, he goes and breaks his pelvis. Um, I hope he runs. If he runs, I think he'll win. Um, yeah, Granatine has been good this year in fairness to him, hasn't he? I think he'll be, he'll be way better, best of the rest of them. And if Shishkin didn't win, then it's, it's Granatine's to lose. But I hope Shishkin wins. He gets three pounds off Granatine. And um, yeah, I think he won. I hope he just turns up so we can actually see him and hope he actually gets the Cheltenham so we can have a proper champion chase. Yeah, me uh, too. Grenatine again has been good this season. He's always good at, at um, Sandown. It'll be a good test for Shiskin, first time up. Um, if you can beat him, who's a Grenatine in um, who's in really good form. But again, I think the seven to four right now for Cheltenham is a joke, as are many anti post prices. But it's just a matter of seeing does he actually turn up. So on the basis of that, out of the two of them, whoever turns up wins. If Shishkin turns up, you'd expect Shishkin to win. Yeah. Oh, enough on that one then. Right. We are going on to the three mile Christmas hurdle at Leperstown. We have Florin Porter in a two to one. We have Classical Dream 23 to 10. Sire de Burley 9 to 2. Ronald Boomp at sixes. Abracadabra Alakazoom at 15 to 2. Sally at 14. Sam Profile 18 and 20 to 1. Bigger the rest. <coughs> Tom looks at. Good race on paper. Flown Porter, the Albert Bartlett winner of Classical Dream, who came back last season at Punchestown and won the Stairs Hurdle. Sir DeBear, Burley is a good horse in his own right. Ronald Pump ran a solid race last time. Abracadabra, Alagazoom, stepping up and trip. There's a lot of strength to depth to us. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on here, isn't there? Um, a lot going on. Flown Porter coming back he, he he was running well the last day wasn't he when he fell um interested to see him back here again uh gentleman's game is interesting they're staying over hurdles with him um you know he got some he got some great one form from last season been second twice in great ones in novice company be very interesting to see what he can do in in open company and then you've got good old classical dream who uh who looks an absolute monster at punches town so uh Look, I, 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 it's a tough enough one. Uh, classical dream goes well fresh. If he turned up here and he settled, I'd always be a big supporter of his, and he did his right good turn in the in the supreme. So, I would side with him. I think he's the one who's still very much unexposed at three miles as well. So, um, look, probably without betting on it, um, he'd be the one for me. I have Florin Porter for me. Um, I think if he hadn't that bad run at the end of last season, he'd be, you know, no one would write him off. The, he won the stairs as he liked. He was going to win the last day. Um, he's the beating of the rest of them. Classical Dream is the, the only one, like Tom said, is unexposed. So he's the one he has to beat now. But you just don't know what Classical Dream will turn up. Will the one that didn't want to jump hurdles turn up or the one that... Mm -hmm. Absolutely smashed everyone up in Punchstown turn up. Yeah, it's a it's a guessing game with Marie. At the end of the day, Florian Porter at that stage was was over the top. So I just think uh, Move, Move in 1981 says do another match bet. I think that's a fair match bet, Dave. Yeah, if they vote run, yeah. Cool. Um look, I'm kind of on the same wave with, with the two of you. I think Florian Porter, he was going to win the last day at Nace. And was going to win well, I think. I don't think Danny went from at all. Classical dream. <laughs> this is the run where he, he either goes and, and cements himself as the best there in Ireland. Because if he comes back and does what he done at the Punchestown Festival, I don't think Florin Porter will get near him. I know Florin Porter was over the top and he done everything wrong. He doesn't really like going that way around either. But then you have classical dream has that really touch of class about him. He can travel through a race at any pace. He jumps well bar when he was 
two years ago when he absolutely tried to kamikaze himself over a few hurdles. It'd be a race if I was down to the two of them. I'd probably go with Classical Dream on the fact that he's the unexposed one. He had one run over three miles. He's a former Supreme Novice Hurdle winner. He looked every inch. You could pick him out a mile in that race at Pungestown. And he, to me, is every inch best horse in the race if he behaves himself and turns up. Again, you can still can't say you can, you can trust him until he does it again. Gets two runs back to back. And he runs well fresh. We know he runs well fresh because he, he won a punch down. He hacked up a punch down. So on that basis, I would. The two of them are, are near enough the same price. I would take Classical Dream to to win. But if, because Florian Porter is going to go off like clappers, I think it'll be set up nicely for Classical Dream to use his, his, his bit of speed to uh, go past him. But that, in saying that as well, if if um, whoever's on Florian Porter knows on him now, um, gets the fractions right, and kicks at that at the end of the hill, turning in, it could take lengths out of him, and it's hard to make up lengths going up a hill, as we all know. It's a very good race and a fascinating race to see what happens, but I think Classical Dream, at the end of the day, will just have enough to win this. Where are we going now? We are off. Oh, we are off to the Savage Chase, where we have... Aplu Tom in a 7 to 10. We have Galvin 24. These are weird odds. 24 to 5. Manela Lindo will be after winning the King George at 13 to 2. Delta Work 15 to 2. Ken Boy 72. Jidan Lee at 10. Or Janadil, should I say. Uh, Steering Kaboom will be still peeling himself off the floor. And Melanin at 16 to 1. Surely all about Aplu. Aplu Tard. Jesus. Aplu Tard. Aplu Tom. Um, turn up and. Cementing himself at the top of the Gold Cup market, Tom. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think if he turns up here and win, I don't see any reason why he won't turn up here. He, he goes well at Leopardstown. Um, and yeah, look, I, I, I think he win. People are bigging up Galvin. I, I think he's got to step up again markedly, to be honest. Um, keep an eye on Janadil. Interest to see what he does. Um, I, I, I think he's a Ryanair horse, to be honest. And uh, yeah. Yeah, be inter- be interesting to see what he does. He'll, he'll be one I'll be keeping an eye on. And then you've got something like Mellon, who you just wouldn't put it past Mellon to finish second or third, would you again? So, um, but I, I I think this is a Plutard to lose almost. I think I think he's a, at this stage of his career and against these opposition at their stages of their career. I think he's a good bit better than him. It looks like a race as well that could cut up a bit. Um, he likes some Indo, Steering Falange, Tornado Flyer, probably Battle Over Dying and Sancro. Florent Porter probably won't run here. Or Franco de Port, should I say. Uh, you've liked the Ken by Janet and Delta and Galvin. And Galvin, to me, I, I don't get the whole Gold Cup horse thing. So, Dave, absolute hard all day long. Yeah, he's the most likely winner. Classiest horse in the race. But this one has, race has a tendency to throw up some strange results over the last few years as well. I actually put up Apu Tom for it last year. Um, I think Tom already mentioned him. I think Janadil will give him a good race. Tom reckons Janadil's a Ryanair horse. I reckon he once stepped up to three miles. Um, the only time he ran over three miles was in the Albert Bartlett, that Monkfish latest exhibition, Time Hill, Fury Road, where he was fifth then behind all them. And he's just ran good race after good race after that. And he kind of gets overlooked because I suppose he's not winning. But I think he's running over the wrong trip. Mm-hmm. He ran against uh, an Argomeni over two miles, beating 60 and odd lengths. Like, he's never going to beat that horse over two miles. Um, he went up to two and a half at Punchestown or Ferry House and won that um, grade one after Punchestown at the Easter Festival. Yeah. And then... Uh, Second again, first time out to Alaho, which I mean, it's the Alaho ran his heart out that day. It's the right trip from. I think Channel is a stayer, wants to go up to three miles and uh, will improve for it. So I think he's a good each way bet. You think that race might leave in the mark a bit? Tim went hammer and tongs now for a good half a mile. That's possible. You don't know until they run again. Mm. He's a tough old horse though. He runs a he runs a lot like true. So 
Yeah, look, I think it's all about absolute heart. I think he'll win again. Um, as Dave said, it's probably what's going to follow him home. And Janet Lill is not a bad shit whatsoever. My only worry be, would be the John Durkin taking a lot out of him. Dealt the work, I can't have. It just doesn't jump well. Galvin, very good. Um, needs to step up again. Probably will place. Camellon is the, the proverbial place or so. I think he'll be running on at the end to grab a place. Um, so I might have a sneaky try. Um forecasts absolute tire but melon to follow him home um uh, picking up the pieces but win purpose i think absolute tire will take some beating in this and be another step towards um going one better in the gold cup next season so that is what i think of that one now we are moving on to our second last race that we're going to cover uh, He's in boots. He's serious. My, my back is very, very happy with that. Somebody just said it's Thomas Lee. I was like, no, I just absolutely die in it. He, he had an argument with a wall and the wall won. Yeah. And there was back some bits. Now, Neville Hotel, Novice Chase, grade one over three miles. This is a decent race. We have Beacon Edge at 72, Vanilla at 5, Run Wild Fred at 5, Fury Road at 11 2, Under Rope 6s, uh, Farcute Delan is 6s, Gentleman's Game 6s, Lieutenant Command 10s, McCarty's 10s, 12 to 1, bigger the rest. Dave, bit of Vanilla, are you like? Are you going to like him on this race? Yeah, if he does go to this race, 3 mile race, I, I would. Um, he will go here. He won't run Lim- uh, Limerick. I think he would um, give it a right good go. Once three miles, a bit of a slog. Uh, Run well, Fred ran very well the last day. Run, won that handicap very well, but whether he'll do that two times in a row is hard to know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, i go with Vanilla. Probably needs to brush up jumping a little bit, though. Tom, what about you? Uh, this, is, this is one of these where it really depends who goes to Limerick and stuff. Um, I thought Vanilla was okay the last day, but only okay. I'd actually give Beacon Edge a hell of a good shout, and he's probably my selection, but a, a watching brief, really, for me, to be honest. Uh, Beacon Edge would be my selection as well, but oh, I think he has a cracking chance in this. He'd be one of my strong bets for the, the whole Christmas period. He beat Gavin Ackle by one and, three quarter, one and a quarter lengths last time out, never looking like he was going to win until he jumped the last outpaced the whole way around um, that was over two mile four stepping out the three mile is going to seal him down to the ground and i think he will love to climb from the bottom of leprous down the whole way up the home straight and i think he's going to take some beating in this i think 72 is a cracking price right now um i think vanilla would be the one following home again i think his brush needs to jump um to brush up and to be a bit quicker um yeah he needs to be quicker over yeah he, he tends to spend too much time in the air or fiddle his way around before he gets to the even fence. But he stays and stays and he stays, stays. and stays, he does. But I think Beacon Edge jumps well, jumps slickly, stays really well, and I think he is <laughs> the one for me in this one. This is actually a division where I think the better horses in, are in the UK, which is They're in not the something. Yeah, yeah. This gets the said a lot. Running, the two, two best running against each other. Noise noise and all, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think Peak and Edge will win this. I think he, so I, so I'll keep more. I'll keep looking at 72 is a great price. Um, right, moving on to the last one because poor Tom is absolutely in tatters there. A lot of races. The rest of the, I, I could have put in a lot more. And I, not a lot of races there, no. Uh, Madison's Hurdle, grade one. We have Sharjah in at 20 to 21. Zani here at 10 to 3. Echoes in rain at 15 to 2. Tiapu at 8. Sadly, at 8. Abracadab Algozoom, 9. Calixios, 11. Saint Moi. 13s, oh, the old petty mush war at 20s. Felix, I forgot how to jump. Deji at 25 to 1. It's not the, the most sexy race in the world, for lack of a better word. Sharjah, even money in around. It's not really appealing, is it? It's like me, I'm just, just there, but not sexy. Oh, no, oh, that you do. Wow. Uh, Somebody's you know what it for is? a kiss under the mistletoe. Do you know what it is? Sharjah should win this because he's streets ahead on form of all these. But every time you think you can count on Sharjah, he don't win. Just be a little dick. You don't think it don't, it always happen. He should win, but Tia Hoopo each way for me. Improving horse. I know he's uh, it's only a four year old. They don't have great records in the uh, open company grade ones, but I think he's a good horse. Tia Hoopo each way. 
to you. Boo, boo, boo. Tom, for you. Um, I am all over Charger for this, lads. Absolutely all over. He's won this for the last three years, right? He's battered Zana here the last day, who was second in the betting to him. I just don't, I don't overcomplicate things. His, his three previous runs behind were before that were all behind Honeysuckle. And then you get back to when he won this last year. So don't overcomplicate things. Charger wins this. That's simple as that. I actually think he's a good price. Money soccer. Money soccer. <laughs> yeah, I think Charger wins as well. But will I be back in an even money? No, probably won't be having a bet in this race. race. Um, so yeah, Charger for the win. And <sighs> good old Petty Mushwar to follow him home. Janadil Tiahupo each way double. Yeah, you want to get on that now before Fields caught up? I know, yeah, they probably won't vote. They both won't run then. Um, the but yeah, I think so. Finish off the whole week with the Sharjad moneymaker. Right, before we go, and anyone that wasn't here when I put him up, I will show you again one more time our oh. enhanced... <laughs> I can't move, look at him. <coughs> our enhanced doubles until midnight tonight, to Wednesday the 22nd. We have Florian Porter. Um, uh, to win the Christmas hurdle and Aplutar to win the Savage Chase at six to one. We also have Sharjah to win the Madison's hurdle and Asturian Falange to win the King George at 14 and a half to one. We have Fernie Hollow to win the Racing Post Novice Chase and Ahoy Senior to win the King Corto Star Novice Chase at five to one. And finally, we have Epiton to win the Christmas hurdle and Clan de Zobo to win the King George at 13 to two. All them are on hollywoodbest.ie.co.uk. You'll find them under a finishing line. Um, boosted odds. And they're there till midnight tonight. Um, right. We're going to finish with our naps and next best. Tom, take it away before you re- forget your own name by the looks of it. Yeah. So the the hell out of here. <laughs> um, my, my one is their charger. That's, I, I, I think he should be about four to six. Um and I, I think he wins, to be honest. I, I just don't think overcomplicated it at all. He's won it the last three years in a row. Um, he loves Leopardstown. He's battered the second favourite last time out. Yeah, he's, he's my he's my bet for Christmas at those prices. Uh, my next best is Silver Hallmark then. Um, I can't remember for the life of me now. The race he was in, and I'm never going to be Roland able to Merrick. He's the in Roland the Roland Merrick. Merrick. Grave. Yeah. Sorry, the, <laughs> out of his... the one that I get, we get given, I get given out to for wanting to put in every year. That's the one he's in, and he's a good bet for well done, Tom. The Roll yeah. America, thanks, Dave. The, I, I Warwick, he, the grade three at Weatherby on, Weather, on yeah. Stevens Day, Jesus and I love it. He's a very like well one 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 forever. One, one yeah, year. and it's the one that K Tribulation won like three years in a row as oh, well. Gosh. Love that race. That's a great one, Tom. Well done, thanks, Dave. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm actually being serious. Oh, like. Poor Tom. I talked uh, right. talk Sulfadine before this, lads, and it literally has not done a thing. I I've got some strong stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking at you, Dave. You bring that vodka and some strong stuff down. Yeah, to you. it's it's. Still, I wasn't even talking about the vodka. I was talking about other stuff. Uh, yeah. My nap is Florian Porter. I just think he's the best in the division. Um, I'd be disappointed if he doesn't win. And school by hours each way, my next best. I really, really fancy he will. Um, I'd nearly want to say the word fancy there. You did. Uh, I really, really fancy that he will win a big handicap eventually. And right on to me. Uh, my nap is a high senior in the quarter star novice chase. Well done, uh, good pick. I think he is the best three mile novice chaser in England and Ireland. So far, um, jumps unbelievably, has a cruising speed, and I think he just has too much for, for a brave man's game. Holds him on hurdles for him as well. To me, there's he's out there improving on the hurdles, so there's nothing that's going to tell me that brave man's game is going to turn it around with him. Um, and for me, he should be favoured. Um, my next best is Largy debut. I can see this race cutting up, um, and even if... Um, Kilcroft does turn up. I think he has his number anyway. And I think this is a horse to reckon with going forward through the season. So, I hope you see you on my nap. And Largy debut, my next best. Well done. You have the Fernie Hollow and a high senior double done for Cheltenham. No. Uh oh. I, uh, I do it. 
has so many doubles and little tricksies and everything else. We need to go. Thomas is gone. Thomas. He's just gone. He's like a porcelain Don now. Yeah, like he's, like I can that. see him now. He's with the fall off the chair there. On that bombshell. Um, that is us done, our Christmas special. So everyone have a good Christmas. Be safe. Be merry. Keep your contacts. I can get into it. I can get in. I was that I was going to say a joke. Say something else there. All right, Tony, so. calm, calm down. There. I was going to say because he then he'll have a go at something as a joke, but no, I'm not listening to him now. But um, have a good Christmas. Be safe. Um, enjoy the racing, and we are back. When are we back? Good lord, I forgot to write that down. We are back on the second, the second of January. So until then, have a good Christmas. Have a happy new year and we'll see you on January the 2nd.